Tuesday. Happy Tuesday, everybody. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. Now, that potential major snowfall plus that cold air, the potential Arctic blast, I told you about almost a week ago, I got big updates on it. It's showing to come in like a monster storm, bringing almost a foot or more of snow, as well as some very freezing temperatures <laughs> moving in. While at the same time, we got to still this potential hurricane coming towards the southeast of the U.S., maybe into our Gulf. So let's go through the information. I don't want to waste any more of y'all time. There's a lot of good information I need to show you today. Potential blizzards, damaging winds, everything. And the Canadian is also showing almost the same thing as the Euro. So as we still get these storms in the Northeast, you still have that tornado threat I showed you about yesterday. We get this storm start brewing up. And as it comes in, we start getting around the 18th towards the 20th. That's where it gets at its peak of everything, not only for the severe weather and the possible blizzard and major snowstorm, also the potential wave going to the southeast of the U.S. So this is the Canadian, and right around 18, we've got the big bowling ball moving through, and this is bringing very cold temperatures, bringing gusty winds, damaging winds, and even a foot of snowfall coming with this while you get this potential wave going towards the Gulf of Mexico. Now the Euro is still showing the same thing that it showed before. It's still going to come in like a big bowling ball, still bringing damage and winds, still bringing freezing temperatures, but even more snowfall coming with this next system, all the way from the 18th, all the way to the 21st. But the only difference is the Euro is taking it to where this wave is going to a tropical storm, even a hurricane towards the Bahamas right around the 22nd and getting hit with this cold front and blocking it. That's the difference between the Canadian and the Euro. And the only problem I have with that is the data. The data shows that that cold front will not be there. I am believing the Canadian on this one. And the 8 o'clock update with our waves still shows we have nothing to worry about this second one. This one in the front, it has 30% chance in 48 hours, 40% chance in five days. And I'm showing literally in 48 hours and 72 hours is when it's going to be meeting the Lesser Antilles, growing to a potential tropical depression, tropical storm past Puerto Rico, and potential hurricane going towards Turks and Caicos, Bahamas, maybe even into our Gulf. Now, according to National Hurricane Center, in 72 hours, your tropical wave will be right here by the Lesser Antilles, and it will be going west after this northwest push. You have this big high pressure ridging out all the way towards the Bahamas, and it's going to steer this wave in that direction. And you can see this according to the tropical depressions of the Euro, that this wave will have a 90 to 100% chance of being at least a tropical depression in 72 hours, going towards the Lesser Antilles. And as you keep going in five days, it will be moving towards Puerto Rico, going towards Dominican Republic. Still showing the same path, going towards the Bahamas, then weakening down as you get towards a week away. Now the Euro is showing that this cold front will come down, block this thing a little bit. It still will strengthen up very strong, not only for the Greater Antilles, also for the Bahamas as it curves and goes maybe either to the north, maybe going into our Gulf in 10 days. So it's already too far to know for sure, but it's been trending that not only is this going this way, but whether it's gonna go north or to the west, I'm still showing that from the other day when I posted this about a week ago, it's still showing the same information, guys. And when you look at all the ensembles, they are showing no matter what, this is gonna form up either by the southeast of the US or get into our Gulf. But going by the control member right here, according to the GFS, you can see it's still going into the Western Caribbean and still going north, right around Florida and going around this Bermuda high pressure, going up the East Coast, a very strong system. And that is what the Canadian is seeing as a potential as well. Here's our closer look. It could be going west in the Gulf, could be going north in the Gulf. Either way, a lot of these ensembles are showing this is going to grow there. But looking at a control member, you can see it does go around the Bermuda High and it does swing around Florida and go around the Southeast, a very strong system. So when you take a look at just the precipital water in 72 hours, it will be going towards the Lesser Antilles and going to the West, this is according to the Canadian. And in five days, it'll be going right past Puerto Rico, bringing a good bit of rainfall for all of y'all. Still 
at least three to five days away. I'll update you on that when we have exact measurements. Then it's going towards the Bahamas, towards Dominican Republic, towards Cuba. But the difference is the Canadian is showing just like the GFS showed a few days ago when I showed y'all the potential storm coming this way. That the tropical wave going through the Caribbean will be getting pulled around this high pressure while this tropical wave going through Bahamas towards Florida and they meet up as one in the Gulf of Mexico, not getting affected by any cold front. And showing that we will get two surface lows, they will fuse together as one and become a hurricane in our Gulf of Mexico. Now the Euro shows in 72 hours, it's a little bit further away and National Hurricane Center brings it a little bit closer, just like the Canadian shows. Regardless, the Euro shows it will strengthen up as it goes over the Lesser Antilles, bringing a lot of rainfall for y'all over Puerto Rico and start strengthening up as it goes over Puerto Rico, past Puerto Rico to a tropical storm, then going towards the Bahamas, getting hit with a cold front right around the 21st, the 22nd, becoming a hurricane possibly for the Bahamas and going to the north because of this cold front. Now I'm showing according to the data, we are getting a deep trough of this cold front, but around the 21st and 22nd, it's going to be going towards a positive phase and not the negative phase. I'll show you what I mean. But so far, the Euro, which is a very accurate model, that's why I like to use the Euro. As it goes by the Lesser Antilles around Friday, start strengthening up, maybe bringing some 30 miles per hour wind gusts, bringing a few inches of rainfall, but it does show it does strengthen up as it goes past Puerto Rico gets to a tropical storm and moves west. But it also shows that after it passes by Puerto Rico, it does strengthen up to a tropical storm, goes by Dominican Republic around the 19th and the 20th, heads to the Turks and Caicos and the Bahamas, strengthens up to a strong tropical storm and a hurricane as it gets pushed by this cold front. And I'm showing this cold front actually won't be doing that big of a deep trough. And to keep you as updated as I can, just within the next five days, according to the Euro, Lesser Antilles could see 30, maybe even up to 40 miles per hour wind gusts in the next 10 days on the full track. It does strengthen up to where it gets 40, 50, 60 miles per hour wind gusts, even 70 and higher as it goes by Turks and Caicos in the Bahamas, over 105 miles per hour wind gusts. And that is a lot. And the rainfall will add up as well. So as it goes by St. John's and Lesser Antilles, you're getting two to three inches of rainfall in the next five days as it goes by Puerto Rico. And the full track brings a lot of rainfall. Almost six inches for Puerto Rico, heavier as you go towards the eastern side of Dominican Republic, and almost a foot as you go by Turks and Caicos, the storm spins here and goes north. That's according to the Euro. But here's a problem I have with that. As you look at the storm coming towards the Caribbean and towards the Bahamas, you can see we get this cold front on the 20th, the 21st, and it carries into the 23rd, goes even deeper, 24th, a big trough coming to the southeast of the U.S. And for those that don't know, when you look at your North Atlantic oscillations, let you know if you're going into a ridge or a big deep trough into the center to the east coast of the U.S., this is what it looks like when you go into a negative pattern of the NAO, the North Atlantic Oscillation. And when you look at your NAO according to the Euro, your North Atlantic Oscillation, you can see also that we go into this trough with this cold front all the way to the 18th. And on the 19th, it's going to be on its way going up where it'd be mid-Atlantic, northeast. It won't be the southeast. And it's going to stay that way through the 20s and not come back down like the model deterministic is showing this morning. So I'm showing the model data will catch up to the data that a trough will not be there. You can even see this on the extended of the year. I'll move my head. You can see the trough. We have this trough coming down from the 18th and then it starts going back up towards a neutral phase where it's going to be the upper Midwest, Ohio Valley, the Northeast, it won't be the Southeast. And as you can tell, we don't go into another big dip. This little dip is going to be Ohio Valley, upper Midwest, Northeast. It's not going deep like the Southeast, like we're getting when this first cold front comes in. So that shows me that the model data is wrong according to the data, guys. This trough will not be there blocking this system in the Bahamas.
So as you look again with the Canadian, you're looking at the precipital water, just like we did with the Ural, you can see the system moving through. You can see the wave building up by the Central American gyre. And there is no cold front going from the 19th to the 20th. And both of these meet up and go into the Gulf. Maybe the cold front stretches out later from the mid-Atlantic and goes into the Atlantic. It's not a cold front from the, from the 18th through the 20th as this wave passes by the Bahamas. Now, the controlled member of the GFS show that it will stay weak and form up late, but GFS and the Canadian is showing that this wave will meet up together and become a problem in the Gulf. And the reason why you see that is because your ocean currents. As you have a tropical wave going in this direction, the ocean currents brings it to the Western Caribbean, and it also pulls that back up into the Gulf of Mexico, and it stays that way. That's just the way that current is. So as that tropical wave comes this way, it could easily get pulled up because of the ocean currents. Plus, the Canadian is showing the update with that cold front coming down that it will be an Arctic blast, guys. It's still going to be in the high 40s and the 50s, but once you go all the way to the 18th, it starts bringing in the pink colors. That's where you start getting to the freezing temperatures. You go into the 19th, it gets even stronger, especially for Utah and Nevada. You'll see how it switches over. It goes over towards Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, even Colorado by the 20th gets even stronger as you go towards the 21st. That is a big cold front with a lot of very cold temperatures coming our way. This is in the 20s now. This is 20 degree temperatures and some of them getting into the teens for the higher elevations. So we definitely have some cold air coming in with this next group of precipitation. So it will be some snowfall coming with it. And the Canadian is showing that it will be some super Arctic air coming with it and it will go towards upper Midwest, a little bit of the central U.S. It won't be the freezing temperatures. The freezing temperatures is going to be in this area. This is for the 22nd. It is growing. It's not going super far, like I said before. It will go to the upper Midwest, a little bit of the Ohio Valley after that. But it's not going that far to the southeast until later. But it is bringing some cool temperatures all the way to the 22nd for a lot of people. And you can see how much it resembles with the Canadian showing the snowfall, the Euro showing the snowfall. Both of them is showing this major snowfall coming. And it's the exact area that I showed you almost about a week ago where we're going to be getting this major snowfall coming in. The exact spots the Euro show. The Euro is an accurate model, but all this snowfall you see, everything you see, the gray is one to two inches. Once you get to all this blue, this is all three to five inches. But once you go to this purple, then you got major snowfall, six inches plus, and all this pink and this bright blue, that is a foot to two feet of snowfall coming in for everybody. Plus, the Canadian is confirming that we do have some damaging wind gust that is coming in with that system. Whether this forms or not, just talking about the snowstorm. But now you have high 40 to 50 miles per hour wind gusts right where you have all that snowfall going on. So that would be blizzard conditions, damaging winds, major snowfall coming down. And of course, the Canadian is taking that right into the Gulf right over the southern tip of Florida, just like we've seen with the controlled member of the Euro a while back. This cold front is really confusing the Euro. But the Euro is confirming a lot of heavy snowfall still coming down, even over a foot. It's not taking it to two feet. It's more like a foot and a half. There's all higher elevations for Wyoming, Colorado. It's showing y'all going to get some very major snowfall coming with this storm. But the Euro is also agreeing that it will bring some damaging winds with it. When it comes in, a little bit of a higher ridge going into it than the Canadians, a little bit of a lazier ridge where it goes a little further to the east. Still got 40, 50, even 60 miles per hour wind gusts. And all this area that's getting that snow, that's blizzard conditions. And of course, still going towards the Bahamas and curving, still bringing over 114 miles per hour wind gusts with it. But whether this forms or not, stays a group of disorganized thunderstorms, which is against everything that we see, even if that still turns out true, guys. Look at all the rainfall still adding up for Florida before the wave even gets there. So there's going to be a lot of tropical moisture adding up for Florida, a lot more rainfall. Plus, I'm still showing y'all still have that severe weather threat for today 
as these storms brew through. But as you get to daytime heating this afternoon, I'm still showing that's when it's going to be worse for y'all. Right around 2 and 3 o'clock, that's where these cells starts really festering up with the daytime heating, getting some good shear on them, and bring a lot of serious chances for tornadoes to the New England states all the way to 5 o'clock. And as you go through 6 and 7 o'clock, it's still going to be some strong cells moving through. So just be aware, you still have that tornado threat going for today. This is high resolution rapid refresh, 18 hours is most accurate. Please share this information. Help me alert others to what is coming on. And a lot of them find it exciting. I know it's exciting, but still you need to prepare for everything that is coming in. At the same time, God bless all of you. There's something I want to read to y'all. I always tell people, hey, I'll see you on the sea of glass. And lots of times they don't know what I mean because everybody knows Jesus comes and takes us up to heaven. But I do believe we are in those end times. And those that beat the mark of the beast, those that overcome the devil in these final times, we will be on the sea of glass, witnessing everything that our Lord will do. Amen. That's why I want to read to you today, Revelation 15. And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up the wrath of God. And I saw it as it were a sea of glass mingled with fire. And them that had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of God. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For thou only art holy, for all nations shall come and worship before thee, for thy judgments are made manifest. And after that I looked, and behold, the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony in heaven was opened. And the seven angels came out of the temple, having the seven plagues, cloth and pure in white linen, and having their breasts girded with golden girdles. And one of the four beasts gave unto the seven angels seven golden vials, full of the wrath of God, who liveth forever and ever. And the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from his power. And no man was able to enter into the temple till the seven plagues of the seven angels were fulfilled. Amen. <laughs> Thank you so much for visiting my channel today. Guys, God bless every single one of you and your families. Help me get the word out of what is going on. I do appreciate all of you that help me get the word out. Either word. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Have a great day, everybody. All glory does go to Yahweh, God of Jacob, our Father. And he is coming soon. <laughs> I'll see you on the sea of glass. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Have a great day, everybody.